Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this week's video, I'm going to take you through step by step how I've processed this image. So this is the end result and this is what we started off with. So as you can see, it's a much more stylized image. It's a lot cooler. The contrast has been altered in there. We're a lot more overexposed in the background and generally just has a more stylized feel to it. Now, as always, there's going to be a free preset available. The link to this is in the description below. So you can download that and you can do exactly what I'm doing. Now, the free preset that you can download is part of the forthcoming Hipstagram 2 preset pack. So you're going to have this one for free, and the preset pack is going to have a whole range of great looking presets that you can apply to your images. So let's just go into Lightroom now. Let's load the base image in, and let me take you step by step through how I've processed this image. Okay, so I've reset the image back to its default. As you can see, I'd also cropped the image slightly just to sort of focus on the model. And the image itself is pretty nice. It's a little bit flat. The colors are a little bit sort of dull. But we're going to go through and we're going to process this right the way through to the end point. Now, as always, I'm going to start off in the basics panel and develop module. So let's jump over to that. I'm going to make a couple of basic tweaks to this. The whole concept behind this is I want to cool the image down and overexpose the highlights while retaining those shadows. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to edit the temperature of this. I want to cool this down. So we're going to bring this over to about minus 20, minus 80 and minus 20. You can see immediately that cools the entire image down, gives it a much more blue feel. Next up, we're going to come down to the tint and we're going to drop this down to about minus 10. Just to give it a little bit of greenness in the image itself as well. So there you can see we've now started to cool this image down. I'm going to need the exposure for this one. We're going to control the way that things are affected for the highlights and the shadows and so on just by using the definite sliders for that. We're not going to deal with the exposure. So we are going to give this a bit more contrast. We're going to bump this up. Not too far, but we want to get some nice dark edges in there. Next up, we're going to grab those highlights and we're going to give those a serious kick. So we're going to push those up to about, about plus 55, plus 60, somewhere in that kind of region. And you can see that now gives the sort of the light behind the model's head really starts to punch that out a little. We're going to open the shadows up a little bit. So we're going to just drag those over to about plus 30, somewhere in that kind of range. Next up, we're going to come to the whites and we're going to do the same as we did with the highlights. We're going to punch those up up to around minus, uh, plus 50, somewhere around there. And you can see that really does now start to give some serious contrast. The highlights really are punching through. Finally, we're going to grab the blacks and we're going to push those up not quite as far about plus 15, plus 20, somewhere around there. And that's looking pretty good. I like that. Next up, let's deal with the clarity and the vibrance and the saturation. Now, the one thing I want to do is I don't want those sort of really stark, harsh edges. So I'm going to just grab the clarity and bring that down. Only a small amount. And that's going to soften the skin out a little bit and give a nice kind of glow to the skin. Great way of softening skin on females. We're going to grab the vibrance. We're going to drop that down about minus 20. And the same for the saturation, but about minus 20 on that one as well. I want that nice desaturated look. So it's got a cool desaturated overall effect. So that's the basics panel pretty much ticked off. We've done that one now. Now we can go through and start dealing with some of the color in the image. Now the one thing I want to do is I want to make the skin tones just a little darker. And the easiest way to do that is just to come over to the HSL panel. And we're going to use the red and orange and a little bit of the yellow to influence those skin tones. So let's just zoom in a little. And what we're going to do is going to grab the reds, we're going to drag those down, and you'll see that the shadows on the skin start to get darker. We're going to grab the orange and just keep an eye on the skin tones, and you'll see that starts to darken down as well. So about mid-40s is good on there. And finally, we're going to do the yellows about minus 20, 25, somewhere around there. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So you can see that just warms the skin tone up. Remove some of the, the overexposure in the cheeks, the forehead and the nose. And just generally gives a more pleasing effect. So let's take a look before and after. Oh, and after. So you can see subtle, but it's enough to make a noticeable difference. And next up, I want to do some split toning. because I want to control the colors in the highlights and the shadows. So let's come down to the split toning, expand that out. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to grab the saturation for the highlights and just bump that up so I can see what's being affected. And then I can control what colors I want to work with this. Now I'm going to go with that traditional teal and orange kind of effect. So for the highlights, we're going to drag that over until we get to the kind of teal colors. And you can see that really starts to add a coolness to the shadows and the highlights in the image itself. So it cools the overall image down considerably. So 
before and after. So we're going to drag the slider down for the saturation. Now, obviously, I'd overdone that just to show and see what's been affected. Next up, we do exactly the same. We're going to grab the saturation slider, jump that up, and this one we're going to take for the oranges. So probably around about that kind of point. Pull the saturation back down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to control the mix by using the balance slider. So what I want is I want to sort of go towards the cooler side. So I'm going to drag that over until I find the mix that I like. Run what there looks pretty good. So let's take a look at before and after. Now to continue on and accentuate that teal and orange look, we're going to come to the camera calibration and we're going to grab the blue primary on the hue and we're going to take that over. So we're going to shift any blues and make them a lot more teal. So around about minus 25 is pretty good. And we're going to do exactly the same then for the hue on the, re on the red primary. So we're just going to drag that over to about plus 35 somewhere around there. Now these are kind of alterations that are quite subtle, but what they're doing is they bring some warmth back into the skin tones. So let's take a look at before and after. So you can see it just balances things out a little nicer. Now, I'm kind of liking what that is, and I could leave it there if I wanted to, but I'm going to take it a couple of steps further. First thing I want to do is I'm going to cut the tone curve, and we're just going to make a slight adjustment. I'm not going to crush the blacks like I have done in quite a lot of my other tutorials, but we are going to adjust those just ever so slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of extra points into our tone curve. So as usual, we're going to add some points on the intersecting lines. This allows us to easily then control the shadows, the mid-tones, highlights, and so on. All we're really going to do for this is we're going to grab those mid-tones and we're going to pull those down just a little. That's going to add some more contrast in there. Now this is really pretty subtle what I'm doing. And we're going to come to the highlights and we're just going to bump those up a little bit. And we're also going to bump up the shadows ever so slightly just to balance things out. So as you can see, very, very subtle, only slight changes, but they do make a difference. So there's before and there's after. So you can see it just brings back a little bit of sort of lack in contrast, removing some of the contrast from these pillars in the background, allowing the model to sort of just pop out ever so slightly. And the final thing I'm going to do is come to the effects section and we're going to add a vignette in there. So we're just going to add a vignette to draw attention. We're going to change the mode of this over to paint overlay. And that gives a much more subtle effect. And then finally, we're just going to come into the crop and I just want to sort of just get rid of some of the distraction on the left hand side. So there we go, and we're done. So that pretty much wraps it up. So let's take a look at the before and the after. So this is where we've ended up, and this is what we started off with. Both nice images, but this one kind of just because a little bit more stylized would look fantastic on Instagram or, you know, those kind of things. Anyway, that's all there is to this technique. As I've said, the preset is available. The link is in the description below, so you can grab that and you can do exactly the same effect. It's also part of the Hipstagram 2 preset pack that's coming out very shortly, so keep an eye out for that. If you'd like to be kept up to date with all of the new additions we add to the site on all the new presets and so on, simply pop over to EssentialLightroom.com and just subscribe to the, the website, and you'll be notified every single week when there's new content. Speaking of new content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new videos that have been added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we've covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.